So, Michael, here we are at the end of this 55 theses, where at the beginning you threw the gauntlet down uh, to the establishment. But I see in this 55 you now offer the hand of hope um, to me and everybody else. And uh, again, I wonder if you could say a bit more about that. I don't know, 55, you know, is the two messages. One is, um, uh, as I said earlier, do you really want to die for their intellectual convictions? But I think, of course, you're going for the uplifting conclusion, the the buoyant, you know, picture of the couple kissing with the sunset and the beautiful music. This is potentially the start of a revolution for human health in which we can recover from some of the damage we have done to ourselves, most especially over the last few hundred years as we've industrialized our diets, but even to some extent repairing the damage done by the agricultural experiment of the last thousands of years. If we'd been doing agriculture for the last million years, there'd be no point to the 55, because we'd be fine. Yeah. We'd be fully adapted in agricultural diet. Then the whole question would be avoiding the industrial diet. Yes. If that were a relative novelty. Yeah. But the point is, the industrial diet is a complete and utter disaster. And the agricultural diet is sort of the, the worm. 55 isn't only about you know closing a door on a century of intellectual error with respect to aging. It's also about opening a door on a new future for medicine in which, contrary to the entire history of medicine, in which they've been able to do nothing for our aging, they will actually be able to deal with people who have their aging under control, who will be aging at a slower rate if they adopt the suggestions here, and in some cases have had their aging stopped, especially for First Nations people um, who are middle-aged and older. And they will be much more promising patients as the really amazing things that medicine is going to do over this century roll out, if the patients that they supply new tissues to, maybe even new cultured organs to, have good underlying health, then you're looking at the defeat of aging in the same sense that in the 20th century, the tools of indeed molecular and cell biology were effectively applied to the conquest of contagious exactly. disease. Yeah. And, and Those people were heroic with respect to contagious disease. Uh, but wouldn't even just working on our current diseases of modern civilization, uh, type 2 diabetes, heart disease and so on, depression, you know, medicine has no answer to these either now and what I understand is what you're talking about does. Well, in fairness to medicine, they have all of the Victor Frankenstein answers to those things. Yeah, okay. I mean, what's more Victor Frankenstein than taking a heart from a dead person and putting it into a living person? Yeah. That's the perfect Victor Frankenstein solution. Mm. And similarly, taking all kinds of drugs to deal with your type 2 diabetes, drugs that one after another will eventually fail to work. Um, that, 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 that's a classic 20th century approach to that problem. Uh, excising cancer, mm. you know, carving up bits of bodies and reconstructing bodies. Again, Victor Frankenstein, frankly, at his best. Yes. You know, cancer should be cut out. I'm not sitting here. I have no interest in persuading anyone to not see their doctor. Mm. I have no interest in persuading anyone to not undergo the surgical procedures that a physician recommends. They're not going to be recommending them lightly. They don't. Mm at least in places where the billing system is more rational than some parts of the United States, they don't want to cut you open no. and take out body parts and stick new parts in. So when they're telling you they have to do that, you should do that. Yes, That's the right thing to do. And when a physician tells you to take antibiotics, definitely take all those antibiotics. What I'm talking about is all of the other issues. I'm talking about the foundations of health and function. Yes. The stuff given to us by evolution by natural selection. That's where the future of medicine has to be founded on evolutionary biology and not Victor Frankenstein. Michael, thank you very much. Pleasure, Rob. <laughs>